So I've set the machine up, I'm just going to do one bolt and show you how to do it. I've actually put this backwards because it's pretty difficult to see even with the light on. So we're going to just turn it gradually, gradually. We should hear this gone to 50. There we go, that's uh, 60. So we've only got to do it quite a few times. So you get the idea. What's, what's three eighteens? 30, 50, I don't know, something or other. Anyway, back in a minute. So once the head's tightened down, that was a job. It's about 86% humidity today and 30 degrees Celsius, it's quite warm. So we're going to put the manifold on now, we've got the gasket on, uh, no sealer needed, just bang it straight on, that'll be good. And then we're going to put the push rods in and set the valves. Now, we're not going to put the, set the valves, um, we're not going to put the injectors in straight away, we're going to leave the injectors and the glow plugs out. So we can turn the engine quite freely to uh, adjust the valves. That's a little trick. Back in a bit. When you're tightening down the exhaust manifold, well, first of all, get a good quality gasket. Don't get a cheap one, because nine times out of ten where I found these gaskets blow is here. Not on the exhaust side, on the turbo side. Not so much at the bottom, because that's a bit thicker. But on these top bits here, they always seem to blow, and especially at the front. And again, tighten them up evenly. Start in the middle, tighten it down, and then progressively crisscross and tighten it down nice and square. And so the next bit, you, <laughs> you have a little raccoon to come around and check the turbo. Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, that's okay. That's all right. There, there are all the bolts on there. Your bottom is in there. Yeah, yeah. No, you're doing a good job there, Mike. It's good. What I can, things we have to work with here, eh? Look at this. Oh, Mike, you haven't done the rockers yet, man. What are you doing? Come on, look at it covered in oil. Look at it. It's absolutely blathered in oil. I have to put it through the wash tonight. I bet I they're switched off. Huh. Anyway, look. What we're going to do now is we're going to... Um, we're starting to push the push rods back in to the engine over here. Uh, I've already started to, and I did them with the camera off. But I've put some oil down here and the bores and I'm dropping them in and I'm making sure they locate properly in the little sockets at the bottom you can actually put them to one side and it's not quite right but if you twist them and feel them then they'll be okay now again when you get your I can't remember if I've repeated myself twice but let's do it again when you get your push rods spin them in your fingers you're supposed to put them across uh, some glass and see if they're uh, nice and straight but usually you can, if you rock them like this you can feel them if they've got any twist and the reason for that is that with the um, if the timing belt snaps you can bend a push rod well you will bend most of them and it is good sense to change all of them at the same time some people don't they only change the bent ones but some slightly bent ones can escape, so it's always worth checking, you know, and just run them like that in, in a couple of fingers like that, look, and look at them and observe and make sure they're not bent. Because that will add, add all sorts of problems. Now, I have had uh, bits and pieces of these engines break off inside the push, in, like the, um, the rollers for the, the uh, lifters. I've had those snap off and break because of these these haven't been fitted properly in the past so like I say put them in I forgot to test that one you know usually the look you can see them if they're bent but so drop it in push it and twist it make sure they're all nice and then you can have a look at your rocker shaft now your rocker shaft I've been st I'm standing on a milk carton because I can't quite reach this. And every five minutes the bloody milk carton slips across the floor because it's so wet and humid in here. So I keep falling off it. I'll do that in one of my outtake videos shortly. Rocker shaft. Very much same as the Series uh, 2, you know, like the Series 3s. 
two and a quarters, not much had changed except the quality's got a lot better. Uh, what you're supposed to do is take them to bits and make sure they're all nice and tight. But generally speaking, if you can, if you can twist them or you can lift them up and down, then there's a bit of wear in them, then change them. I very rarely check them. You can actually pull them back like this and check the shafts. See like that look? If the shaft's good, you know the bushing's good. All right, so you want to do that, all of them. Make sure they're all nice and tight. Also, another thing to check, oops, there goes the bolt. Another thing to check is the pads on here and the balls, they're all nice. There's no pits or uh, cuts in there. So there's a few things to check. So now I'm gonna bolt this back on and the next thing is to check the valves. To set your valve clearances couldn't be simpler because I'm going to show you a technique that's going to blow your mind. Well, <laughs> that's if, if you don't already know it. On a Land Rover being a four-wheel drive, we have an advantage of being able to turn the front wheel with, with the wheel jacked up in fifth gear and with the handbrake off but the wheels all chopped up, we can now turn the valves without turning the crank. How good is that? Because they're real fiddly to get in down there. I've zoomed in a bit, but you'll get my idea. Because I wanted you to see these valves. The firing order is one, three, four, two. Always, it always will be. Now we have a little an advantage with this because if we see these valves at the back rocking, and a lot of people use this rule of nine business. Well, I'll never bother with that. That's a waste of time. But I'm going to turn the wheel backwards and keep your eye on this rocker here. Right, I'm turning it backwards. So you see it went down. Watch when it comes back up. Just ever so slightly. Look at this one. Watch, keep your eye on that one. There, it's just going down, right? So that means we can set the valves on this one because we know this one's firing. How simple is that? It's a good way also of finding out top dead centre on your truck. If you, if you can't find your timing marks, when these rock, it's on top dead centre. It always has been, always will be. Not unless it's some funky car, I don't know. So what we're going to do now is simply, you've done this before, you've seen videos of setting valves, you don't need to know that, but you know, but, but to turn the wheel is a really good technique. So we're going to set the valves. I can't remember what they are. I think they're eighth hour, aren't they? Yeah. Because we've changed the valve, uh, the head gasket. Ooh, look at that. We drive the bus through them. So I'm going to spend a little while tightening those up. But I just wanted to show you that technique because it is so simple. Maybe I should zoom back a little bit with the camera. And you can see what I'm on about. Just wait a minute. I'll turn the lights off. Let's zoom out. So what I'm doing is... I'm turning them off so we're not looking in there. I've actually just got the wheel jacked up and I'm turning the wheel like that until, they're, until I find a nice sweet spot. The downside of this idea is there's that much backlash in the old drivetrain, it's a bit difficult. But hell, it's, it, it certainly beats getting underneath with a crank and with a spanner and trying to mess about. So I've set number three, just get rid of that thing. Turn it over. Keep your eye on the valves. Keep your eye on number one this time. There you go. So number one's rocking, so now it's time to set number four. So I'm getting the put a new rocker box gasket in. I've put some sealer. I, I you know like some people say well they don't need sealer on, but well what's oh, um, it doesn't hurt. Just put a little bit on, just a smear with your finger look. Because it just I don't know you they say you shouldn't put sealer on, but 
I find these gaskets leak anyway. But anyway, put a bit of seal around it. And then, uh, then we're going to plonk it on. We're going to use the new washers that came in the kit. This is a pain kit. We just like to clean the finger up a bit. <clears throat> we'll take out the the steel washers. One, two, three. Now this is a strange kit because uh, it's got some. Do you know? Do you ever get this? When you get gasket sets, you get washes that you don't even know what they go on. I don't know what these great big ones go on. I haven't a clue. Anyway, magnet. We can be assured now that those are copper washers. Now, yep, but I don't know what these big ones do. I've never seen those ones before. And there's like two, three, Four, five, six, seven. What the hell are they? Anyway, let's fit this rocker box cover. So we're boxing up now. It's just a matter of putting hoses and pipes and bits and pieces on now. We're almost done. One thing I wanted to show you was injectors. This was the nozzle that, this was the uh, seal that came off. Look very carefully. And I'll show you the seal that is supposed to go on. This one, a lot bigger. See? This is the one that came off. All right. And this is the one that goes back on again. This is just a plain washer, this one here, this is just a plain washer. But this one has got a little step in it. Now the step, the raised portion, goes towards the top of the injector, like so. All right? Now what I like to do, just before I fit these, is get a little bit of wire wool, try not to touch the, the tip, but give them a bit of a clean up so the seal's nice. A little bit of um, copper grease. Alright. And then put your seal on. Remember, shoulder side towards the injector. And then look, you see, you can put your injector on, it won't fall out. What else have I got to tell you? That's about it, really. If I think of anything else in a minute, I'll, I'll show you, but... It's very, very simple now. It's just uh, like they used to say in the Haynes manual. Rebuild is opposite of removal. And they don't tell you anything else. But I think we've got it covered and then we should have this fired up today. I'm going to get the glow plugs in. We've done that. Uh, they're easy. Again, copper grease on the threads. Um, not to worry about. Nothing to worry about. My apprentice here is just checking everything. What a day it's been with this bloody thing, because every time I want to do something, there is old Geraldo. Anyway, let's get this on. We might be able to get this boxed up, but I'm not going to sign off now, because there might be something else. These flat plates hold the injectors down. And this is the way they go. The curve is like this. So the injectors here, the bolt in the middle, and the plate here. So they go like that not like that, that's the wrong way, go that way. I noticed when I took this apart that they were upside down. Let's get these fitted and see what she's like. Wow, what a long day it's been today. It's been hot, humid, I've got it on, the head's on, it's running. I need to do a few more little bits and pieces but at least I got it driven into the shop. It sounds good. Last job, I've got to fill it up with coolant. To do that, I'm going to use the old coolant because it isn't very old, but it's got a bit of dirt and dust in it. J cloths, can you remember these? Your mother used to have them. Go and pinch one. Or anything like this. But this is a beautiful, beautiful filter because you start off at one end and you put your funnel in and you grab your, 
you coolant and it's got flies and all sorts in it, but it's still good coolant. Over here we use glycol. See? You don't have to throw it out, you can use it again. So thanks for watching. What a long day it's been, but we've got it up and running. Um, tomorrow I'll finish it off. I've got one or two pipes to nip up and tighten up. But uh, yeah, if you, I hope you've learnt a few bits and pieces from that. And we'll catch you later, because tomorrow has got to be another big day, because we've got some German people coming in. They're on tour in Canada, so we could have some good videos for that too. So take care and we'll talk to you later.